that? Yes, the, um, the BND, the German equivalent of the CIA, uh, uh, their chief, Ernst Uller, uh, wrote to us uh, demanding the removal of a document exposing uh, corruption in Kosovo, uh, which included information about CIA behaviour in Kosovo. Did you respond uh, to all? Under, under the threat that we would be prosecuted under German law. Did you respond at all? Yes. I, tell me more, Ernst, tell me more. Uh, precisely what law is it that we are going to be prosecuted under? Um, and eventually uh, B and D decided um, that they didn't want to tell us uh, the law that we would be prosecuted under because, of course, there is no such law. Uh, please speak up a little. The line from Islamabad in Washington was they were saying, one of the things they said was that because it was seven months old, it wasn't reflected on how they did operations in that. Yep. Um, do you have any evidence or anything that you have received to suggest that that might be a good thing? Yeah. Uh, we won't comment on what we have not yet released. Um, but that said, uh, we can look at what happened in six years, because you have a window of six years from 2004 to 2010, um, and we don't see sudden dramatic shifts uh, when there is a change in policy, as an example, by the changes in policy when the Crystal came on board. Uh, I would find it very unlikely uh, if there were any sudden dramatic shifts uh, in the behaviour of um, US forces or the ISI uh, over the last seven months, given that there hasn't been any significant change in the prior five, four years. It would seem to be unlikely to me. If there would be any inquiry, would you be willing to give the original raw material to get people an insight if there would be a need or if there would be requested from a governmental side? What do you mean? Would you open up the material, the raw material which you now have produced basically for the we, we have made available to the world uh, 76,000 of these reports uh, in CSV format, uh, XML format, SQL format uh, as a format you can load the whole lot into Google Earth and plot it by space and time. Um, we have also released all the reports in a browsable interface. Um, that if, we, if we actually get this VGA cable, cable working, I'll be able to show you. Uh, that said, of course, we have not released the uh, precise format uh, that we obtained from our source. I think you have the adapter. Do you have an adapter for that? They reckon you have downstairs. They reckon I have, do they? They reckon in your briefcase you've got that. If not, I can go and get them. Not, not, not to my knowledge. I'll, I'll go and get one. Yeah. Another question? We have a lot of supporters in London, uh, and yes, I was collaborating with the Guardian. That was quite convenient. Um, we had a, uh, we had the Spiegel and New York Times and us uh, in a collaborative basement, if you like, working on this material here in London. Here in London. Yeah. So you said you aim for maximum publicity. I was just wondering about the timing of this. Is Sunday the twenty fifth of July a date you've had in mind for a while, or um, did you uh, think this was a particularly opportune moment to release these documents? Well, Monday's always good for releasing something big. Yeah. Uh, a Monday where there's not too much happening. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you set the agenda for the week. Have you ever been to Afghanistan? I have not. I have been, I have been to Iraq, but not Afghanistan. Any past 
I would like to go, yes. I, mean, I, ha I have good friends uh, who have been, uh, but I have not myself. I don't know. Um, there does tend to be information about um, nearly, nearly every coalition partner, but there may not be much. Uh, there won't be information by Norwegian troops unless they've, they've just happened to have given it to, uh, uh, to US forces or there has been uh, an engagement. But the, US, uh, the Norwegian presence in Afghanistan is not insignificant, so I imagine there will be something. Not at a government level, no. Um, well, we, we, we are, un, you know, we released a, a US counterintelligence report uh, from February 2008, uh, some 32 pages, uh, which um, looked into how to destroy our center of gravity, uh, the trust uh, that sources and the public uh, have in us. Um, I don't believe that report was uh, enacted. Um, it may have been, but I don't, I don't believe it was. I believe it was simply a sort of recommendation from um, some board counterintelligence analyst. If you do come to Berlin, you should have uh, at some point in the future that uh, a death of more group of people died as a result of the information that you have published. What will you do? Will you stop? Uh, we will see what we did wrong and come up with a new policy that works. How do you think this will change the information that the armed forces are giving journalists and the public? We, we can see the disparity and in some cases you may say there is even deception what um, the, the PR officers and, and the yes. information are saying. It, do you now feel that there is less room for them to gloss over what's actually happening on the ground now? Well, there's certainly less room to gloss over for what happened in the past. Uh, now, th this information reveals some of the, the structure um, of operations. Uh, as an example, is Task Force 373. What is its role? That is now public. So. Um, if it's involved in some operation, although it does try to c conceal um, that it is involved in operations, changes its name every six months as an example, but um, it is harder uh, to hide what has actually occurred because there's some kind of structure uh, to hang an investigation off. Um, um, we do see that, you know, what, what tends to happen with United States military uh, is that if there's a, a, a big kill, um, all the men are classified uh, as insurgents, the children are classified as civilians, um, the women can go either way, and then it's only when the press, or in some cases for Afghanistan, the Afghan government or a human rights organisation start pushing, uh, then there is an opening up. Would you say that's active deception or is that just operations, is that what happens? It seems to be the deception from the ground. I mean, the units who are involved, the cover-up starts at the, at the very ground. Um, and then there's professional information operations units. Uh, their, their, their whole task is to, to make the war more palatable, to make the civilian population um, happier with what is going on. Uh, that's, that said, the United States military um, is uh, with the exception of some of these PR people, they're basically engineers. Um, they're engineers who build roads, they're engineers that shoot guns. Uh, so they, they are fairly frank and direct uh, people outside um, of those people that specialize in, in PR. So um, that is one actually fairly positive aspect about the United States military compared to some other militaries.
the, the once you directly sort of engage and ask a question, the, the, t the top level people are not likely to lie to you unless they're repeating a lie that's been passed up from the bottom. Did your source attach any conditions or expect, express any preferences about how this information should be used and how it should be published? Yeah, well, all sources want maximum impact for them. All sources want maximum impact for their material. Um, however, they expressed, well, and we also say that we will go through a harm minimization process, but they express concern uh, that uh, innocents not be harmed in the production of our material and that we do go through our regular harm minimization process. Have you had any feedback about how they feel about the way that this release has gone? Not yet, not yet. But, I mean, I, I hope we've done them justice. Okay, all right. Hmm. Okay, so this is, well, you notice there's a typo on the top. It's actually, should be 25, but, um, now it is 26. <laughs> so this is wardiary.wikileaks.org. This is um, our interface to this material. A brief description of what it's about at the top. Um, links to our media partners. This is a video uh, from Channel 4 as well. Uh, and then how to read these reports. Because this is not always so easy. I've described some of the, the gotchas involved in understanding this material. Um, what it will tell you and what it won't tell you. And we go into quite some detail about that uh, and the various fields you will see in the report. And then on this front page, you will also see a map. On this map are the top 1,000 kill events, the most serious events. Uh, it's not purely kill, it also, the seriousness scale is something of our own making, but it adds up the internally reported uh, kills, both of civilians uh, and combatants, wounded and detained. So, these are the 1,000 overlaid on Afghanistan. We can pick one of these. We'll pick this one at random in Jalalabad. And we go to the report itself. Here is a unique reference ID. If you Google for this on the internet, there is nothing else that has this reference ID, not just in our material, anywhere on the internet. So you can cite this in an article, and that will uniquely refer to this. Um, this is the region, latitude, longitude, date, type. This is a demonstration, quite interesting. This is, these categories are um, applied by the US military. All these fields here, except for the reference ID, uh, are the fields as described the US military. That, of course, doesn't mean they're totally accurate. That just means how they describe them. So it's a demonstration, affiliation neutral. This means it wasn't um, the enemy attacking or something like that. It's demonstrators. In this demonstration, 37 killed, 10 wounded in action. Um, now, if we go down and look at the text of the report, this marine company reports demonstration in Jalabad City. Now, you'll see here just looking at this from a distance, you can see there's lots and lots of acronyms. I'm familiar with reading military reports, but even I don't know all these acronyms. So we have written a system to reveal what all the acronyms are. So you see up here, TF Thunder, and this is underlined. So if you move your mouse up here, you'll see TF is Task Force. And similarly for the other acronyms, ANA, Afghan National Army, uh, for the common ones. DIA, 
is used rarely enough that uh, we don't expand the acronym for it. But this is Defense Intelligence Agency. And this one, United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan. So you can read through this. Uh, unfortunately, this PAX is in lower cases other than expansion, but this is uh, people. <coughs> and uh, reading through, we can see that uh, they claim that there was some riot um, and uh, a 13 year old struck by a vehicle. Mm. <coughs> so, not entirely clear from my brief reading of understanding how these people died, whether it was in the riot or whether this was um, from some other form of military activity. Uh, and down here, we have attached a <coughs> map to the report which shows you exactly where the US military say they report it. These tend to be very accurate because uh, military units carry GPS units. It tends to be accurate to within 10 meters uh, of the event. Um, we can zoom out to get an idea. So this is not too far from the center of Jalalabad, just a bit in the suburbs. Uh, you can see the uh, terrain detail this can often be helpful to understand where you see an event that occurs um, in mountainous regions or on the border regions between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Okay, so that's just one uh, of the top 1,000 <coughs> that we have placed on this map. Here's another one uh, on the border. may even be just inside the border. Only a very brief report. Combined Joint Special Operations Task Force reports troops in contact at border control point six. Uh, unknown A small arms RPG fire, border control point six. Um, this is a time. Zulu, when you see the Z, this means um, London time without daylight saving. Uh, this Zulu time is the most uh, common sort of standard across the US military. Not entirely clear what happened by this report. This is quite a, a small report, uh, but they say 25 enemy killed in action, 44 wounded. This is actually, this may be, looks relatively legitimate uh, because we see so many wounded. There are other reports where we see, and I'll take you to um, one now, uh, on this sidebar. There's different ways to look through this material by type, and we can see the number of reports in each type. So these are, once again, self-declared by the US military. So detainee operations, friendly fire, 148 events, and so on. Category tends to be much richer. We have some hundreds of categories here, including uh, 517 reports of detainee transfer. Escalation of force, 2,271 events placed into that category by the US military. Now, once again, military units are not inclined to place their own activities into escalation of force, but nonetheless, this is a very interesting basis to start research. <coughs> if we can also browse by region, oops. Affiliation, NATO may be interesting uh, for some people here. Date, and from this we can get a sort of feeling for how the reportage is going. So we see the f in the first month of 2004, there's only 138 reports. But when we go to, say, in the middle of 2005, you see 387. This is probably mostly not due to an increase in the tempo of the war but rather an increase in reporting. So an increase of this reporting system uh, through US military units. But we start to see a bit of stabilization around here. And the subsequent increases, I think, from about 2006, 2007, these are mostly not increases in reporting, but rather an increase in intensity. And one of the reasons I say that is you see in 2008, we actually have a decrease 
briefly. So this is like a winter uh, hiatus uh, in fighting, uh, which is known for Afghanistan. It's, we're going down. Uh, but number of reports are going up and up and up and up um, until we have the end of uh, 2009, um, 2,500. So compare that to what it started with, 138, back in 2004. So we pick um, one of these months, say October 2009. Uh, we have generated a, well, first of all, there are sort of 66 page index into this month of these various reports. This is our index that we have created, extracted from the raw data. We haven't modified any of the, of the raw data. Uh, for the m whole month, we have generated this graph. This is for October 2009. We have generated this for every uh, month that we have available. Killed civilians, killed enemies, killed host nation, killed allies, wounded civilians, wounded enemies, wounded host nation, wounded allies, and detained. Across the course of the month, this is the number of people involved. This is the day on the month. This can be sometimes be a good, a good guide to where to sort of look into this material because there's once again some um, 66 pages for this month. So it's a bit hard to get a window into. And the other way to another uh, important category that we created is severity. So I spoke about this before. This is just the, the sort of the simplest thing that could possibly help you give some understanding. The number of self-declared killed, wounded, detained, injured individuals across all sides and civilians um, declared in the reports. Add them up, sort them by the total. And this is the, the high list, the high kill list, if you like. So at the top, we see an event that occurred on September 9, 2006, involving Combined Joint Special Operations Task Force, requested a medical evacuation for two Afghan National Army tank corners southwest of Patrol Base Wilson. So let's have a look at that. We see 181 <coughs> declared enemy killed, one wounded, zero detained. So this is a suspicious report. Once again, we can go through it. We can see these acronyms expanded, Combined Joint Special Operations Task Force, et cetera, et cetera. Requested at some stage some uh, close air support. The battle damage assessment from that close air support was estimated to be 62 enemy killed in action. This is the AC-130 gunship, big cargo plane coming in for three hours, shooting guns down. Um, one US troop was killed, one US soldier was killed early in the day, possibly a trigger for this really quite extraordinary action in the rest of the day. Um, <coughs> of the three Taliban killed and the two here, one wounded, Total battle, battle damage assessment is 181 killed in action, which also corresponds to the, the sort of pre-field field that they, they've given it. Sometimes you'll see updates in these reports which do not update the, the sort of statistical field. So there can actually be more people killed when you read the text than uh, if you look at this. This is where it happened. It's a about 20k outside of Kandahar in a, a, a vineyard growing region. Um, and you can see some interesting things from the map. So we don't know precisely where this, these the sort of destroyed buildings are from, whether that was destroyed uh, as a result of that engagement or um, an earlier engagement or by some other forces, but this is possibly uh, related to, to that event. Okay, so that's one way to read this material. Uh, also, if you're looking at any particular report and you're sort of not sure how to read these things, or you can also click on these here as well, which is kind of handy. You'll get an index 
uh, for these different types. If you're not sure how to, how to read these things, um, you can just click on this Afghan War Diary Reading Guide, and this will pop up and tell you a bit about it. Um, or the field structure, which will tell you about these things here. What, what do these mean? Um, so there you go. Uh, and so this is the sort of package that we worked on to give to our three uh, press partners. Slightly earlier version, of course, because we put a little bit more work into this in the past three weeks as well. Uh, now, that is live on the web at this URL. There's also, if you look at uh, the reading guide again on any report, uh, you'll see uh, David Lee's uh, excellent, uh, from The Guardian, excellent video tutorial on how to read uh, some of these documents. Doesn't go into quite as much detail, but he gets to the point uh, a lot faster than I do. Uh, well, yeah, damn ads, okay. Right, so you can look at that on your own time. Um, okay, and I'll just ask any questions about this. There's one more I want to show you, a different way of looking at this material. Any questions about that presentation? Can I ask you a general question? Yeah. or hopefully a deep understanding and scrutiny of the war in Afghanistan and as a result uh, um, changes in policy about the persecution of the prosecution of the war um, and um, a, a deep consideration given by all parties into how they want it to continue, in what way. We don't really have an opinion on whether the war should stop. Of course, in an ideal world, there is no war. And every person shot is, of course, some kind of tragedy that led to this circumstance. But um, should there be some kind of general pullout, um, presence kept in, in, in Kandahar or Kabul, uh, this is sort of outside our remit. We don't have an opinion on this. Um, we just have an opinion that the abuses should be stopped. Uh, the abuses of war um, should be stopped. Um, just before you, just on the categorization of uh, yep. does it say, uh, further down, does it say friendly or friend, friends? Yeah, so that just, that just means allied forces, including the United States. Right. Uh, so. Here's an example of how you can both trust and not trust this data. Look at the type field. Once again, these are not our fields. These are US military. The only, the only one that is ours is this severity score, but that is built out of the fields that were internally declared by the US military. This type field has friendly fire, 148. Actually, I'd be quite surprised if it was that low. But nonetheless, internally declared 148 friendly fire events. Now we look into category and we see blue on blue. This means allied forces firing on allied forces, basically, which is a type of friendly fire. And we see 18 reports. We also look at blue on green. This is allied forces attacking Afghan troops and police. 10 reports. Blue on white, allied forces attacking civilians. Uh, blue dash white, another way of saying exactly the same thing. But we add all these up and the green on blue and da 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 da, and we don't get anything near 148. Okay, so the, the reports are not um, all categorized in the right way. Categorizations change. People don't want to categorize their activity as being some type of, some type of um, something that they may get investigated for. Troops are very busy, they don't bother to fill these out, etc. But it, it gives you something. I mean, it's, uh, it's something quite significant. 
given that so many of the things that you talk about are civilian casualties, and yet what we see there when they talk about blue on white, yeah. the figures are so low. That's right. Does that lead you to believe there is a, a, a sort of massive attempt at deception? You know, that they simply do not want to write down anything on white. They will do everything they possibly can yes. to conceal this. Well, the, the units are involved, you know. It's, uh, it's like this old uh, a phrase that came home to us, unfortunately, in, uh, in, um, in Kenya, where two lawyers that we uh, were working with were uh, gunned down in broad daylight in um, March in 2009, that, who were investigating extrajudicial police assassinations, that murderers will commit murder to cover up murder. So people who are very proximal to the crime often have intense incentives to uh, even murder to cover up murder. So misfiling a report is, is of course, nothing. Um, but we do see escalation of force uh, in here, and that had you know, 2,100 reports. So that's a bit more significant. And so that they didn't classify these escalation of force events as blue on white, they classified them as an escalation of force instead of blue on white, allied on civilians. Okay. So another thing that we have done is put these all into Google Earth. And this would be probably of quite some interest to the TV stations here. At least it would be if it worked. Um, Let's see. So here we see a slider that takes us from 2004 all the way to the end of 2009. It's not quite bright enough to see it. This says 2009. We can adjust the point in time we're looking at and the window of time we're perceiving. So it's about six months window we're perceiving now. Now this because there's so much data in here, we've limited this particular version, and there's quite there's a number of different types, to just those events that were of high severity. So um, the events that had at least sort of 10 people killed, wounded, or detained. Uh, and if we zoom into Afghanistan, You can see these events, where they are, and we can sort of slide our perceptual window across the course of the war to see these appearing and disappearing as they occur, and you can see a real ramp up as the war goes on. And then we can see all these most significant. Once again, this is only about um, a th a thousandth of the, of the actual data, it is, but it's the, it is the most high scoring in the severity score. Okay, so now we can see all of them at once. There they are, structured over Afghanistan. So you can get a sort of a feel for where the, the most dangerous parts of this country are. Here's the border with Pakistan. We go in a little bit on this border. So here's some event that has occurred right on this border with a fairly high kill. 
you click on this, okay, we see there's actually two reports here. One threat report and one action. So this was actually probably a report of some some people somewhere and it led to an action. It's at the you're right on top of each other at the same spot. Right here on the Pakistan border. Okay, so we can click on this and here we see the report. Unfortunately, this doesn't have the, the acronym expansion stuff in it that the, the, other, the other interface we did up did. Um, but you can see this report and you can, you know, if you've got the time, you can then look it up in the, um, on, the, on the website, on the War Diary website. So, the, so that was spotted by some, this is a spy system called JLens, reports anti-coalition militia setting up rockets and using caves, da 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 da, da. they bring in some F-15s, um, who engage in airstrike, uh, they drop some big bombs, GBU-12s. Uh, they bring in two Apaches uh, and a drone. This is a, a type of predator, the Shadow. They end up destroying vehicle for people. Uh, they see some flares that they believe it's Pakistani military marking their positions, possibly so they don't get uh, bombed by the US military. And the reported kills by this airstrike, 10 civilians, 55 enemy. Okay. Thanks. Any questions? Thousands, yeah, thousands. We, I mean, there's very fast statistical work you can do as well that's significant. I mean, add up all the self-reported civilian kills, what are they? Add up all the um, self-reported military kills, what are they? Add up all the detainments and the, um, and the wounded. What is the ratio of those things over time? Did the ratio of people being wounded versus killed change? over that time. What is that ratio compared to Iraq? Well, actually, we look at this and um, it's quite rare to see wounded. We see a lot of killed. We don't see many wounded. Very rare to see detained as well. So the, the war in Afghanistan seems quite lethal. And the Afghan war reporters I've spoken to say, well, this is, this is because it's basically a standoff war. It's air support. Uh, it's ground-to-ground -ground missiles. Um, Anyway, those quick statistics you can get out. We, we have got them out. Uh, Channel 4 also independently pulled out some of those. They haven't done the ratios and they haven't plotted them over time. It's quite easy to do. Uh, and that is, that is, in fact, what the United States military does. That is where it gets its reporting from, is this data. So now the whole journalism community has the same information that the US military has to produce its press reports. And if there are thousands of these incidents that require investigation, some of them perhaps serious enough to be labelled war crimes, I mean, are you in any way optimistic that this work will be done? Or do you see perhaps it just being out there and not investigated? I don't see them all being done, but listen, a whole town is destroyed. There's going to be these people. I mean, if we just pull up this event here, those 10 civilians and 55 other people killed, were presumably all together, so that's probably the family of those people. Um, but they have relatives in this area. I mean, that's of intense interest to these people, how their fathers, brothers, wives, children were killed. It's of extraordinary interest. So, um, no, I don't, don't imagine that the, the world press has the resources to investigate all this material. Well, as I was speaking about the US military, do you imagine that they are remotely no, interested no. in investigating this? No, of, of course not. But they will be forced into investigating. I mean, that just like all, most organizations, accountability comes from the outside. Internal accountability is 
a preemptive defense against external accountability. Um, but you don't need every incident investigated. What you need is enough investigated to create deterrence. Uh, that's how policing works. You don't need to catch every criminal. Uh, you just need to catch enough to show that there is a decent chance of being caught and that provides an effective deterrence uh, for criminal behaviour. Um, and so if the United States military engages enough prosecutions um, or is sufficiently embarrassed such that the career paths of uh, generals are interfered with, uh, that will create an incentive uh, to, uh, in, to develop policies and put internal policing uh, that doesn't result in so, in so many casualties and other forms of abuse. It would be interesting to, to understand whether this material could possibly affect the Taliban in the same way. I mean, it, it really doesn't paint a flattering picture um, of the Taliban either, which to some degree is no surprise because it's the United States military reporting on the Taliban. Um, but there are some things like IEDs going off in an area that are probably legitimately IEDs going off in the area. Maybe occasionally an IED is deliberately uh, a bomb strike is deliberately miscategorized as an, I, as an IED. That's, uh, that's certainly possible. But my feeling is that most of them are, um, in fact, genuine um, uh, IED explosions and have caused a significant loss of civilian life. Um, opinion polling in this country, at any rate, has between, I think, 63 and 71 percent of the population already opposed to the war. Um, do you expect? that these revelations will have an impact on that, certainly when the revelation of the Mei Lai massacre took place in Vietnam had an impact on uh, public opinion. And do any of your media partners um, intend to run opinion polls after the revelations to see if there's been any such impact? I'm sure they do now, <laughs> um, but now that they've had that wonderful suggestion. Um, I mean, I sort of answered this before, yes, of course we expect impact. I mean. 17 pages into Spiegel, 14 in the Guardian. There's, there's going to be impact in uh, the New York Times. Um, uh, last, in the mid, it was nighttime US last night, so everyone is asleep. But I noticed uh, this morning, uh, even though the New York Times hasn't really come out in, hadn't come out in print, um, it had only come out on the web, uh, the article linking to that from the Huffington Post had over 5,000 comments on it. Um, by comparison, uh, our collateral murder tape, which is of course much more instantly emotionally uh, impactful, uh, over the entire course of that article, over a day or something, or two days, had 10,000 comments, and that was the highest commented article ever in the history of Huff Huffington Post. So this thing already has 5,000 uh, in a few hours in the middle of the night. So. Um, I think there will be significant impact, and also there's you know there's a lot of material here. The, our media partners and us have only just scratched the surface. There's all the different countries who are involved in this coalition. You can look at it from their uh, from their angles, and the different specialists and the journalists who have written about some of these events before, but hadn't had these backing documents that uh, can sort of throw additional light uh, onto onto what is happening. And I imagine academics and students and computer programmers will come in and do a uh, a better job than we have uh, with this uh, presentation technology. Julian, hi, I'm sorry. I was hoping that, um, I know that this is covered a little bit by the New York Times, but how many of these, these events that you know have flown under the radar? That is to say, you read about them in the military report. And but don't read about them in the media. And you don't read about them in the media? Yeah, almost all of them. Almost all of them. Almost all of them. And it's like I, like I said before, that uh, this material covers the bus accidents and the car accidents of war. Normally, we only hear about two thirds, perhaps, of the bus accidents. But the vast majority of casualties come from the, the one person, one child here, one person there, five here, ten there. Um, well, some of these things you see are deep in deep in the mountains, and um, not near any city, so they're not not really reported. So. You know, the, the vast majority of events here uh, have not been reported. Um, and I'm sorry, one last question on the kind of thousands comment that you made. This is, uh, 
I mean, do you think that these are thousands that can be investigated as potential war crimes, or is these are these kind of like the missile strike you were talking about earlier, where to you there's first glance evidence of something very wrong? Yeah. There's many that are first glance evidence that something is suspicious when you look at, say, the, the killed versus detained or killed versus wounded uh, ratios, the numbers, the use of AC 130s um, that are quite suspicious. But I mean, just looking in the self defined categories, we see 2200 escalation of force events, uh, self described. Um, yeah. Um, sorry, can you talk about uh, specifically how your media partners went about filtering these reports? And um, maybe what you think the influence in terms of the media landscape is in offering these three um, politicians advanced access to all of these reports. I'll ask the second question again because I didn't hear it, but <laughs> let me answer the first one sure. first. Um, sorry, what do you mean by filtering? Do you mean how we explore this or? Sure, yeah. yeah. so, well, in the, in, initially using this system we have here, but this system uh, is designed for the whole public to use at once. Um, but we try to import this material into Excel and that is actually the best way to explore it. Um, because you can limit each sort of field by, uh, we look at this text, just show us all the reports that have children in them. That's how I found the, the TS-373 assassination unit. So I was just looking at text. It's quite important when you're starting these sort of investigations to not narrow in too fast, but in, instead look for something quite broad and, and don't uh, tell the data what your prejudices are, but rather let the data tell you what it is. Um, but it's 91,000 reports, so you have to have a little bit of a limitation. So just children is something that's nice and broad, uh, not too narrow, um, but provides some constraint. So that's how I found TF373, because I was looking through this and I saw that they had, this assassination unit had killed uh, seven children in a botched raid. Um, we, uh, I don't think it's up yet, um, but we will distribute that XLS file, that Excel file that we're using. The problem is it's so big um, that it takes about 20 minutes to load and then uh, Excel autosave cuts in every 20 minutes and takes another 20 minutes to save. So it's just always saving co constantly. So you have to turn, turn that off and do a few other little tricks, not too much. But then um, Harold at The Guardian and I developed um, a sort of a database version of this that's, that's fast, it's in HTML. We, We'll get that up on the web as soon as possible. We have the code if anyone uh, wants to use it uh, and develop this in their internal media organization. We can't give the whole thing, we can't run the whole thing for the general public because each search takes about a second. And um, I looked this morning, we had uh, 23,000 concurrent downloads. Um, so our, our servers are just not capable of um, allowing people to, to go through the material in that way. But, Without a doubt, journalistically, that is the, the most effective way uh, to go through this material. The second part of the question was um, about giving these three politicians advanced access to these reports. Yeah. Do you think there is any kind of advantage because of that? And what influence that has in the media landscape? Yeah, well, I mean, there's supply and demand, right? Mm -hmm. if, you make, if you make supply infinite, uh, perceived value goes to zero. And therefore, people don't invest. And uh, it's, it's just a, a basic fact of economics. And we have, we have seen, seen, learnt this the hard way uh, when we have released big compendiums of material. The more serious it is and the bigger it is, uh, the less chance it has of being reported because if it's serious, it takes a skilled journalist to report. You don't want the person who does the cooking column writing about the Pentagon, you'll get in trouble. But the, the person who's writing about the Pentagon, um, they're seasoned, they have a high opportunity cost. Uh, and as a result, um, they want to make sure that their, the investment of their high opportunity cost pays off journalistically. But if there's a, a lot of material and it seems to be good, then the perception is that another journalist is also perceiving it to be important and is therefore working on it right now. And if it's a lot of material, it's going to take a long time to work on. So therefore, the chances, some random chance that you don't know that you'll get scooped, 
And the more material is there, to go, is there to go through, the greater the chance you'll get scooped because the longer time you have to spend on it. So there's a, a really extraordinary and perverse pernicious effect. The more important a leak is and the bigger it is, the less chance it has been properly reported if it is distributed at once to everyone.